Jim Robinson called me and said, um, we want you to write an opera for Stephanie Blythe. And I just said, Gertrude Stein. I thought of her voice. I thought of stature, someone who presides, and someone who invents. What interests me about Gertrude Stein is less her writing, though I love her writing, but it's more the magnificence of the milieu she created. It's the conversations that took place at that house every day, in particular, every Saturday night. If I was being truly honest, I would say maybe there's a little bit too much of that needing to be the center of attention in me that she most definitely had in her. Uh, but I think that's also part of being an entertainer, being that person that starts the conversation and sort of keeps conversation going where she wants it to. Gertrude and Alice's salon invited some of the most exciting artists of the early 20th century, including Pablo Picasso, Henri Matisse, Juan Gris. She forms these crushes on these artists. I totally get it. I'm there. I've been yeah. there many times, unfortunately. Because the sexiest thing on anybody is talent. That's it, man. If somebody's talented, that's I'm done. It's my debut in St. Louis. So I'm very, very excited about this because I have been a big fan of this company and for a very long time. What will be really exceptional in this particular theater where the action is thrust out into the audience, because in this piece, Gertrude does speak to the audience. And the whole audience are the denizens of the salon, and Stephanie is Gertrude Stein presiding over this theater. The audience is actually part of the production. So this is a little bit of Lost Boys. It's also how Gertrude Stein and Alice responded to the world that nearly disintegrated twice while they were in it. In Act One, Gertrude and Alice are weathering the war in Paris. It's almost Verismo in some ways. What distinguished the Verismo style was that these moments that are like a musical rush and extend them for longer periods of time. And that makes me think about this piece because there are moments in it that literally will take your breath away. They're full of heart and they're full of love and generosity. This piece is very emotionally accessible because of that. There are people that are critical of her. And I did say to Royce when he wrote this libretto, I said, I don't want to whitewash her. For example, speculation about how is it that she and Alice, two Jewish lesbians, were safe during the war and absolutely nothing happened to their art collection. Like Those paintings saved her. Like the legacy. It's, yeah, it saved her legacy, exactly. Yeah. If, if it hadn't been for them, she would have just been seen as another sympathizer. It's still slightly speculation. It's not proven. No, you're totally right. You know what I mean? It's not proven, but it's too big a speculation to ignore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was a very smart lady. I mean, these two women lived out loud when people were not living out loud. You know, this was unheard of. How the hell did they get away with it? I was very, very interested in telling a truthful story about Gertrude Stein and about her relationship with Alice and her relationship with the world and history. And I think that this piece does that beautifully. She was someone with a strong enough personality to be part of the ushering in of an entirely new language, both in painting and in writing. The opera is about two women, their relationship, and history, making history. And what's fascinating is that the history is being made through art and relationships and love. Two women who love each other more than life itself and who, in loving one another, charge the particles around them 
so that the world they live in is is radioactive. There isn't anyone who will watch this piece or take part in this piece that will not feel intimately connected to it because it speaks of things that are very universal and it's all overshadowed by love, which I, I mean, that's, love's where it's at, baby. So I'm very excited. Historical.